Hello and welcome to Great Dalton. Today we are going to be taking a look at the brand new Revolution Trains Mark V coaches in Engage, which have just been released after a long and eagerly awaited three or so years. The first variant to be released is the Caledonian Sleeper coaches with the TransPennon Express Mark V A coaches to follow in the coming weeks. In this video we're going to be taking a look at what's in the box, a close up of the coaches themselves, the lighting functions of the coach and then to see how they run. Now I am aware that they do have excess drag which the guys at Revolution have been quickly made aware of so I'll be trying some of the remedies they have suggested in order to reduce this too. So let's have a look at what's inside the box. As always, Revolution Trains packaging is always nicely presented and looks very professional. On the front we have the photo and on the back we have a little bit of information about the Caledonian sleeper train itself. It's always nice to learn a bit about what you're buying. Now, when we open the box we immediately see that it's not the standard foam trays that most of the passenger stock which Revolution Trains manufacture. It's the ice cube packaging which is more associated with their freight stock. In here we have the user manual and um, the warranty and troubleshooting information. We have exploded parts diagrams and then on the back we have the marshalling formations for pro setting up a prototypical rake. So in the box we have two spare couplings which are longer and that is for adding to the end coaches which are coupled to a loco in case the uh, loco that you're coupling to doesn't have lateral movement it just adds a bit more room between the coach and the loco to prevent any body parts fouling on one another these are Delna style couplings if you want to add a bit more realism to the coaches as factory standard they are fitted with the Rapido tension lock couplings but if you wanted to add a bit more realism you could add these also what we have here is a, from what I believe, a magnetic wand for operating the lighting functions. This I believe is um, hovered across the top of the coach and the switches are inside of the coach and they turn on one of three lighting co coach functions which we shall look at. So let's get the coaches out and have a look at the actual coach themselves. So here is the coach, and we'll just take a few angles of all sides, so you can see in its entirety. If we have a look underneath, we have these lateral couplings, which allow the coaches to stay close around corners, and just gives a more realistic look. All of the underbody is well detailed, and we have this unique type of bogey, with the pickups and the bushes which we should go into later when it comes to the drag. The livery is well printed and the coach just looks rather good. So let's get it on the track and have a look at the lighting functions. Now as standard when they come from the factory all of the lights are turned on. So I'll just turn on the DR5000 and you can see that the tail lights at one end have come on. The saloon lighting has also come on, and then, although you can't see it, the tail lights on the other end are also on. So if we get the magnetic wand, we can turn these off just by hovering above the coach. It might be a little bit easier to see if I turn some of the lights off. You'll be able to see the saloon lighting a bit better than these tail lamps, which I think are a really unique design, and I have not seen them before on British Engage. And to have those on every coach really makes for a lot of flexibility with the rakes and the marshalling. So that, I think that's a brilliant feature. Here is just another view of the side of the coach to see the interior lighting a bit better. It's not overwhelming as you find with Dapol light bars or the lighting in one of the other EMUs like the 3T1. It's very ambient, it's quite low level. And if we turn the light off completely, it doesn't overwhelm the camera when pointing at it. Okay, so now we are going to move on to how the coaches actually run on the track 
And the main focal point of this video which will be focusing on the excessive drag that these coaches have already gained a reputation for having. So what we do quickly is a quick comparison. We have here a Dapar Mark III and on the other track we have the Revolution Mark V. I'm just going to give them a simple nudge just to show you how freely they don't run compared to the uh, market standard. So the Mark III has actually gone off the camera and the Mark V has only moved a couple of inches. So this issue was quickly picked up by Revolution Trains and they have offered um, a number of solutions to try and solve this. So if I just quickly put this train onto the other track with the other 15 that I have set up. This is the rake all set up on the track. I wanted a full 16 coach Caledonian sleeper as my focal point for the layout is the southern west coast main line where these trains were often seen in full length. Now if I just try and push that by hand it's quite difficult for a rake of N-gauge coaches even to push by hand. So the Class 92, which is the desired loco for this rake, has virtually no chance of pulling it. It's quite a light loco itself and it just doesn't have that traction with the amount of drag these have. So what I'm going to be doing now is I'm going to split this 16 coach rake into two smaller um, rakes of eight coaches each. On one of the rates, I'm going to do the three solutions as suggested by Revolution Trains. The first one is to take out the wheel sets which aren't turning and simply reseat them into the bogies. They just clip out and clip back in. The second solution is to check for any burrs on the pickups or the bushes while you have the axles out. And you can do this on all wheel sets. And then the third one is to just run them in. So I'm going to get a couple of locos, I'll probably run them in for about half an hour, they'll do as many laps as they can, and then at the end of that we're going to give both rakes a shove and we'll see if one coasts further than the other to see if the remedies are actually valid and it works. Right, the two coach rakes are now set up on the track. On this outer track will be the one that I do the work on and on the inner track we shall leave untouched to see if there's any noticeable difference. So first I'm just going to give these a quick push and see if they're roughly even when they coast. So they're more or less the same which is good. At least we can have a fairly even contest. And here are the locos I should be using. Um, I've got my Faro 66, my Faro 60 and my Depol 68. These locos are more of my reliable runners and they've also got good traction to them because of the weight. So they'll do about 10 minutes each and hopefully within about half an hour we should get a fair few laps on this outer track. But first I'm just going to quickly show you the bogies underneath and how the axles unclip so you can check for the burrs and then reseating them which is the one of the solutions that Revolution give for these coaches. Right, I've got a coach on the track just here and I'm going to push it very slowly past the camera so you can see which axles aren't turning and then this will allow me to see which ones need repair. Front two don't look too bad and as we come to the back I've noticed one that isn't turning very well. It's the furthest rear which is not turning at all. So on this coach there's just the one axle, and we'll have a quick look at it. On the bottom we have the axles, if I can just focus that. Just here, and we simply pop the axle out with our hand. And then I'll give it a quick wipe with a cotton bud and a blow. I'll check the pickups and then I can just reseat that back in and it looks like it's turning a little better. Let's just put it back on the track and have a look. Yes, 
That is turning a little better. I'm not sure if you, how well you can see that. But that's turning now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get on and go through these eight coaches, find all of the treble axles, play, take them out, give them a wipe, re-seat uh, re them, and then I'm going to run the train round for about half an hour. I'll get some running shots while I'm doing that. And then we'll have a look at the other rake at the end to see if there's any noticeable difference. been running the outside rake for a good 40 minutes now all three locos did get rather warm um, which is expected but now we do the comparison to see if it's actually helped with the drag on the coaches so I'll give them a nudge with this cotton bud box and then we'll see if um, there's a noticeable difference So, there is somewhat of a difference of about an inch. It doesn't look like it's getting anywhere near the Dapple Mark III level of coasting, but it is an improvement. I guess time will tell whether these coaches are going to get any better with just a bit more running in. But I'm going to leave this video here anyway. Um, hopefully this has given you an insight to the coaches and whether, the, um, whether they're right for you or not. So thank you for watching, I'll leave you with some running shots of the 8 coach rate going down with the Sleeper 92 and then at the end there, as you can see, is what I picked up from the Great Electric Train Show today the Avanti West Coast Pendolino, the 11 coach unit which have now finally been released along with the other Pendolinos so I'll just give you some running shots of those two going around the track together and I will join you again soon 
when we make a start on this side of the layout. So thank you again. You've been watching Great Delta. Bye-bye.